Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the webinar. Um, I hope you had a good break and ready to go through um, our overview of the EPA Pro system. We're going to walk you through that um, this afternoon uh, with the presentation slides and also with Libby Timms, our super user for the EPA Pro system. Um, so welcome, Libby. Libby's on the line. Afternoon, everybody. And we also have Jane Cowley, who's our senior manager for our quality assurance and improvement team. So it's a small group this afternoon. So please feel free to raise your hand to type in some questions um, as we go through. It's your session. So please don't be afraid to ask questions. So following on from the session this morning with the process overview, uh, we need to look at the actual EPA Pro system this afternoon and one of the first thing that's going to happen uh, when you receive your um, email notification to get you logged into EPA Pro um, is that you're going to have to set up a password um, the screen will demonstrate in a moment for you but you can see it on this slide here you'll follow the link on the email um, that will prompt you then to reset your password and then you'll be able to um, sign in. When you sign in, you're going to see an um, overview of the um, dashboard. Uh, this is the first screen that you'll see when you log in. And Libby's going to take you through all the features of that dashboard um, in a few moments. Um, we're going to look at notifications. Um, where information will be displayed for you to access and um, how to access those notifications and read them. And Libby's now going to demonstrate an overview of the dashboard and all of these useful tabs down the left hand side of the screen and explain how they work. So Libby, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, just bear with us while we um, change who the presenter is. Thank you, Rebecca. Hopefully you will all be able to see uh, a new screen now. So this will be your landing page. Just bear with me. So when you log on to the EPA Pro, this will be your landing page. And on your landing page, you have quite a few functions. The first functions that you will see here on your left will be your caseload, gateway review, assessment, support materials, and a reporting. So for your caseload, you will see here that you've got a wait and acceptances and you've got my caseload. We'll go through these in more detail further on to the presentation, but ultimately your awaiting acceptance is workload that has been allocated to you from the EPA bookings team in Burntwood, which you are yet to accept for working. And then your caseload is your current workload of apprentices that are currently going through an EPA. The gateway review tab will show you those apprentices that have been allocated to you if they are enrolled on Gateway, those who have completed Gateway, and those who have completed and been archived. Your third tab is your main working tab. Again, we'll go through this in more detail further on this afternoon. But ultimately, again, this is where your main workflow is going to be. We do have a support materials tab, which will list all the support materials that you need. And at the bottom here is um, a reporting tab. Again, we'll go through all this in further detail. To the right hand side here, you will see uh, our EPA name is Frank Farmer. Lovely Frank, he's been with us on a long journey over the last couple of weeks. And on here, you can log out of your account and edit your profile. The little bell icon here is where you will find all your notifications and these notifications can be anything from an update about gateway completion 
you can see here that um, you've got one saying one apprentice has now been assigned to you. These will come from the EPA bookings team in Burntwood. As you go further on, you will see workload where certification has been completed for one of your apprentices. And you can also see that results are available for assessment components here. So that is pretty much um, your functionalities of your landing page. As I just scroll down, you will see you have a calendar. Here will you be able to see all your appointments that you've got from assessment planning meetings. You will see that here, the apprentices that are awaiting acceptance. Again, those are waiting for you to accept or reject for working. And then again, you can see apprentices at Gateway. Any questions so far? Um, no, I can't see any. Oh, we've got a hand from Julie. Julie, let me just unmute you just a second. Julie, what's your question? Hiya. Um, will we get an email from the EPA team to say that somebody um, has been assigned to us so we know to log in like we do now? So the process is, um, and it's ever such an evolving, process, an evolving platform that we've got. I'm currently working, um, having email notifications that will come to you. So once an apprentice has been assigned to you, you will get an email notification um, from the actual platform itself. But Thank ultimately you. as well, it's just making sure that you, you constantly keep a check on the actual platform as well for any notifications that come through should you not reach your emails in time. Does that make okay, sense? Okay, thanks very much. No problem. Thank you, Julie. That's a good question. Okay, so um, that's the dashboard overview. Um, we're going to move on now to uh, receiving a caseload. Um, we do have slide presentation on this, Libby, but do you want to take them through? It's quite a straightforward slide. Do you want to take them through on the system? Yeah, absolutely. As I said, the, the system itself is not a complex system. Um, and once you start using it, I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, you'll know you gain confidence with it quite quickly. So to have a look at your caseload, again, on your menu to your left, you click on caseload. So if we click on await and acceptance, you will then see a display of apprentices that have been allocated to you from the EPA bookings team that you need to accept or reject. You, the uh, apprentice name will be given and the standard that they have been registered on to complete their endpoint assessments. And again, it's a very straightforward process. So for Bobby Boyd, we are going to accept Bobby. So if I just click accept just here, you will get a prompt um, asking you, are you sure you want to accept this apprentice? You click OK. And then you will see that to the, at the very top, a green line will come up across that will say apprentice has now been accepted. That apprentice now has disappeared from your waiting acceptance landing page. And if you go into my caseload, Bobby now shows here. OK. So for argument's sake, the awaiting acceptance, you've still got one more, Becky Harris, she's been allocated to you. But because you've won the lottery the weekend, you are gonna reject Becky. So we're just gonna click on reject. For whatever reason that you cannot accept this apprentice for work and you have to give some kind of rationale. So let me just quickly type in on the lottery. and then just reject the apprentice down the bottom. Again, you will get a prompt to ask you, do you want to reject this apprentice? You click OK. And then as you can see, your awaiting acceptance has gone down to zero and Becky has now been removed from your dashboard and she will not show in your caseload either. And that is accepting or rejecting a caseload. Is there any questions? Um, no questions that I can see, Libby, um, from the attendees at the moment. Um, so when they reject, that goes back to um, allocation. So it will be allocated to a different IEPA then. 
Yes, that's correct. So on the um, EPA Bookings Team dashboard, it will come back saying that you have rejected it, and that prompts the team then to reallocate out to another uh, IEPA. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So if we just go back to um, the presentation slides just for a moment, I'm just going to um, take the presentation back. So on the presentation, we've looked at the dashboard and you will get a copy of these slides. So don't worry. Um, we've looked at receiving a caseload. And as you can see, the slides represent the screens that Libby's just navigated you through. What actions to take? And we've looked at caseload. And then on this slide, Libby, we've got um, the actual flow, haven't we, of the, the process flow of the EPA. So that would be good if I give it back to you and we can show yeah. um, what Absolutely. that looks like on the system. Yeah. Okay, so you would go to your My Caseload. And as I said before, this will display all your apprentices that you are currently working with. So let's find one a little bit further down. So if we go to Apprentice 001101, um, and we go along here, so it'll have the standard that the apprentice is registered on. It will have their name details. As you go along here, you've got like a little tab that's got profile. By clicking on profile, you will then see a flow of where that apprentice is within their endpoint assessment. So you can see that registration has been completed and they are yet to meet gateway. You can see at the bottom here, there's a little flow chart and that one can go up to 100%. By ticking onto the profile tab, that then will display information about the apprentice, um, basic information and about their workplace details. By clicking on the notes section, this is um, a note section that should you put a note into this part, you, know, you must be aware that the provider will see this. So for no internal comms, is this any point to be used because the provider will see. So what I'm going to do now is just find another apprentice just to show you the difference. To go back to your landing page, just click on the logos there. That will take you straight back to your first screen. So you go to caseload, my caseload, to get the display of all your apprentices. Uh, let's see apprentice 84. They're on the customer service practitioner standard and we go along, and we press the profile tab. That's a little bit better. So you can see that registration has been completed and gateway has been completed and we are yet to wait for planning the assessment. And at the bottom here, you can see that it's the stage is at a 33% completion. Any questions? Uh, yep, yeah, Julie's got a question. Julie, what's your question? <laughs> Sorry for all the questions. Um, from looking at that, how soon after they actually um, register do they get allocated because that looks like quite sort of very early in the, in the program that they're actually assigned to a, a um aipa um, yes it would be a lot earlier than it currently occurs so you will get that caseload allocated um right so and that's sorry go on no carry on and that's why you've got that breakdown of apprentices that are still sitting at gateway um, right. and then the ones that have passed through gateway and are ready for the planning meeting. Okay, so it's not just sort of once they've got through gateway, it, it's right at the beginning of their programme. Right at the beginning of the process, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, everybody everybody happy so far then? Because the next part, we're going to go on to look at um, the planning meeting. So we've looked at navigation, the dashboard, how to reject and accept, how to manage your caseload. So what I'm going to do is just quickly have a look back at the slides. Um, so we've just been through this process with Libby and we've looked at um, the process of carrying out an EPA and um, monitoring that EPA. 
Um, so now we're going to look at how we book the planning meeting. Um, really, this um, screen that you can see now is to show you uh, as a reminder when you do get the slide pack that you can work through this and it will tell you how to access the system. Just reading a quick question. OK, yeah, that's a really good point. So we have just had a, a point raised there um, by Matt. So he's saying that um, sometimes the registrations will depend on how early the customer registers um, for that endpoint assessment. Um, some do that very early and, and some don't. They leave it quite late. So it will depend and you'll have to monitor your caseload um, to see who's passed through the gateway and who's ready to have a planning meeting booked in. OK, so um, planning meeting slides. We're going to take you through this now with Libby and the system um, and take you through how to set up the planning meeting, how to book it and how to put that into EPA Pro. So. Back to you, Libby. Thank you, Rebecca. OK, so we're still on the landing page. And we are now going to demonstrate how to book a planning meeting. So like I said earlier, the assessment tab is your working tab in effect. That's where you can book planning meetings, you can manage your planning meetings. There's an assessment progress and certification. So it's very straightforward to book a planning meeting. You tick on the tab, book a planning meeting. And then this screen would be displayed. So to pick a date for the planning meeting, you just click on the date tab there and it will display a calendar for you. So we're going to do ours for Thursday. At the bottom here is a little clock. So if you click on that, you can pick your time for your assessment planning meeting. We'll do it at quarter past 10. The expected duration is just a default for one hour. Um, it, it doesn't matter if your meeting goes over or under, it's just a default. The type will be remote. And this is then where your go to webinar link will be. And at this point, then you want to add the apprentice. So you could click on the blue tab here and it's pre-populated. So you would enter your apprentice's name. So here's one I made earlier. Finley Holmes, we're going to select the add button here. And at the bottom then you will see that Finley has been displayed at the bottom. You've also got two new tabs that have come up. You've got add other attendees and add guest. So uh, add other attendees here. Again, it will be pre-populated and it will give you um, everyone who's got a relationship with that apprentice, whether it's the training provider, the employer. So for this instance, we're going to tick that the employer and training provider will be in attendance. And we are also making sure that we have ticked ourselves as an IE path. Once you've done that, you select close and they will be displayed at the bottom here. So you've got your apprentice, a representative from as the employer, training provider and yourself here as an independent endpoint assessor. If you come along here to the confirmed tab, we're just going to confirm that these four attendees will be joining and you will see that they will go green. You do have the option to add a guest. Um, that could be a, a leaper that would be attending for whatever reason. And if that was the case, you would just add the first name, last name and the email address and this pressed add. So we've got everyone that's gonna be attending the planning meeting. Once we're happy and we've ticked that they're confirmed, we're gonna tick save. And as you can see, that has now saved assessment meeting created successfully. Any questions?
no, I don't think we've got any questions at the moment, Libby. Okay. Thank you. So um, if we need to reschedule, is that the next step? Yeah, so you've set this up. An email has now gone from the platform to the provider, the employer, stating that the planning meeting is booked for the 23rd of January at quarter past 10. And then somebody comes back and says, actually, I can't make that date or I can't make that time. Can we reschedule? No problem whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is take you back to your landing page to show you how you would get to that. So back to your landing page and we will go down to assessment. We will go to manage planning meetings. And we're going to find our apprentice. Okay, and our apprentice was Finlay. Now you can drag all the way down, but we do have the search column just here. So I'm just going to pop Finlay in there. There he is. So there's Finlay, and you've got these actions here. You can see the status of the planning meeting is in scheduled status at the moment. And you've got action. You can create a plan, edit meeting, or just view. For this instance, we are going to edit the meeting. And what's going to happen is the same display that you did to add all your attendees has shown. All we're going to do is click on the date scheduled. Again, it could just be the time or the date. But for this instance, we're going to change it to the 27th. We're going to change the time to quarter past 12. OK. What's really important at this point is that your go to webinar link will have to be updated um, because of the rescheduling of date and time. Because we are rescheduling, we're going to put that the EPA, uh, sorry, the employer could not attend for argument's sake. As you go down, you've got here, I don't know if you can see that with that, reason description. You have to put a description. So you're going to choose from the options here and then also just pop a little description in. It can be the same. Employer was unavailable. As you go down, you'll see reschedule. You will get a prompt asking you, are you sure you want to reschedule the meeting? We're just going to tick confirm. And now you will see that the assessment meeting has now been rescheduled. Any questions? Any questions from anybody on that so far with your planning meeting and rescheduling a planning meeting? No? Okay, so shall we move on then? So we've, we've completed our planning meeting, we've got it all set up um, and we're going to need to look at how we schedule in the assessment activities into EPA Pro that we've agreed at the planning meeting. Yeah. Um, is that okay, Libby? Would you do that on the system for us? I certainly can. So we are going to go back to the landing page. Again, down to the assessment tab. So we've booked the planning meeting, we can manage the planning meeting. And what we're going to do now is manage the assessment components. So by going to manage planning meetings, what's really useful is if you'd like I have earlier, I typed in the search engine, it will stay there. So it's always best just to type that out so you get a full list of your apprentices. So Finley. Finley, we go along. You will see here that the original planning um, was in scheduled and it's now been rescheduled. Okay. So what we're going to do on this instance, we are going to create a plan. And this will give you a, a calendar. You can view your calendar by using the tabs here from January, going along to February, etc. And to the right hand side, you will see the components that build the endpoint assessment. 
So for this instance, we've got the showcase portfolio, we've got a practical observation and a professional discussion. So what we are going to do now is actually plan when them components are going to take place. And it's very simple how to process this. So for the showcase portfolio, we are going to pretend that this is booked for the 27th of January. We're going to click on the showcase portfolio and lift and drag the 27th and drop. This screen will then be displayed. It will have the date that you dropped it in and the time. So we're going to change the time to 11 o'clock on the 28th. The days and hours and minutes are default, so please not worry about that. The, lo the location type will give you two options. It will be online or physical. By physical, we mean face to face. So we will put this down as an online and go to the next tab. At the top, you will see there are four elements that need to comp be completed for this assessment component. So this just gives you an overview of the assessment details. Nothing for you to do on this. So go to the next page. Here will be a pre-populated of the employer's details and the provider details. Again, nothing for you to add. And then on this page, the last one, you have to select yourself as an IEPA. Our IEPA today is Frank Farmer. So you would select Frank Farmer, and this will then give you a display of your availability and what work you've got going on for that particular week. Once selected, you select save an email. And as you see, the showcase portfolio assessment component has gone green, which indicates that this has now been planned. For practical observation, we are going to pretend this is going to be held in January, uh, sorry, February. We click, lift and drag and we'll drop it in on the 4th. But we've done that by accident because actually we want to do it on the 3rd. That's no problem. We click on the date scheduled to the 3rd and the time, we'll do that for 10 o'clock. As previously mentioned, the days and hours and minutes are default, so there's nothing for you to change here. The location type, we will set to online, and we will go to the next page. Exactly the same process as previous. You have an assessment details overview page, no work for you to be done on that one. This will be pre-populated with the employee and provider details. And again, the last page, you select yourself as an IEPA. It will tell you once again how much work you've got going on for that particular week. And you select save an email. As you see, the practical observation has now gone green. So that indicates that two of the components have now been planned. Our last but not least is the professional discussion. We're going to select lift and drag, then drop. This is going to be held on the 7th at a time of what, three o'clock. Our location type will be online. Actually, I'll do this one physical just so you can see. So physical, as I said, is face to face. Uh, the terminology is actually EPA Pro, not sitting guilds. So our location, we will put down, uh, there you go. So where the professional discussion is going to be held. So we go to the next page. Again, exactly the same as previous. To the last page where you select yourself as an IEPA and you save an email. As you can see now, all three components have gone green, which show an indication that all three components have now been planned. Any questions? Okay, thanks Libby. Um, any questions from anybody? Um, whilst I just bring back up the slide pack to demonstrate that within the slide pack, um, all of this will be covered for you. So we've looked at planning meeting, um, how to plan, so how to put that meeting in there. I'm just whizzing through these quite quickly, but don't worry because you're gonna get a copy um, to refer back to. So all of that demonstration 
that Libby has provided, rescheduling the planning meeting, and then scheduling those assessment activities based on your um, meeting. Um, your planning meeting will then be added into the EPA Pro system. So remember when we talked about a new process here, you're going to be agreeing the assessment dates at the planning meeting, documenting them and then bringing that information and adding it into the EPA Pro system. This slide shows you the drag and drop options that Libby's just demonstrated, setting the date, time, location, etc., um, for those assessments. If you need to reschedule, so um, I'll just ask Libby to show you that on the system, but there is a slide there to explain about rescheduling and changing the component, which looks to be quite straightforward, Libby, in the system. Yeah. Um, if I just give it back to you to reschedule one of those that we've booked in. Okay, that's fine. So again, I'll go back to the landing page. You will go to assessment and manage planning meetings. We can see here that Finley's now, because we have planned the assessment components, that this has now gone into in progress. We're going to loop, 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 blue, view, apologies, view the plan, not blue it. Okay. And we will select the um, one of the components. So as you can see, this one here, sorry, I was a bit too quick. By hovering over, I can see that the apprentice is for Finlay and the assessment component is for the professional discussion. So um, Finley's unable, um, for whatever reason, not to be able to do the professional discussion on that day. So we're rescheduling it for the 18th, for argument's sake. And the time is going to be four o'clock. So on this page, the only thing you need to change and update is the date of when the professional discussion is going to take place and the time. Also to check that if it is um, an online, that the GoToMeeting webinar has been updated to reflect the new date and time. We go to the next and you follow exactly the same process. This has already been defaulted to you from previous and you just save an email. So in effect, all you are doing is just updating that time and date. And again, if it's a go to webinar that will need updating as well with the new link. And it is as simple as that. Any questions? Um, no, I don't think there's any questions. So when you click on save an email um, and yeah. that generates an automatic update to the customer of those amendments to that assessment. Yeah, so anybody that you've added at the um, assessment component stage, if you remember, we went through um, adding um, attendees and you could pick the employer, the provider. When you save an email, yeah, an automatic email will generate from the platform that will go directly to them, informing them of the rescheduled date or time. OK, great. Thank you very much. Um, just wanted to check to see if there's any questions from anybody. Any hands? No. So now that we've input all of that information into the system and it's all correct and we're ready to carry out the endpoint assessment, um, let's pretend that, that we have and we're, we're, we're moving further through the EPA. And the next step would be to um, assess the component and enter the result. So. Libby, I'll leave the screen with you for now. Um, okay. Could you take us through um, what we would do next as an IEPA now that everything's planned in and we start to carry out those assessments? Absolutely. So again, I'll take you back to your landing page by just ticking on to the logos. OK, so you go to your assessment tab once again. But this time we've got the planning meeting. We've managed our planning meetings, which basically means that we've but the assessment components for that EPA. And we're going to go to assessment progress. Assessment progress will display all your apprentices and where they are currently with their endpoint assessments. 
What's really important is at the top here, you have a tab that will say in progress. By ticking on this, we're going to change this to filter by status because that will then display everything for you. Again, you can see coming down here, these again, excuse the apologies for the names. This is just test data that we've been using as this is a test site. So you can see here a, a colour chart of, of different things. So just to show you Apprentice 31, we tick on Apprentice 31, everything is green. And we can see each showcase, sorry, each assessment component has passed. And that is actually uh, that apprentice has completed their endpoint assessment. Or well, apprentice 30, should we say, ticking on that. You can see here that they have had um, a distinction for their showcase portfolio. They've got a distinction for their professional discussion, but their practical observation has gone blue. And in the notes section, you will see that one previous result has been given which indicates to you that they had previously failed their practical observation and they have now booked a retake. But you will get used to, to these different statuses as you go through. So for this instance, I'm going to look for a different apprentice purely because I've got data in the background waiting for Justine. Lovely Justine. So you can see here, showcase portfolio, the status of that component has been booked, practical observation, professional discussion. As this is a test system, we, we do encounter a few very minor bugs within the platform uh, and we're just waiting for one to be resolved at the moment. It does have no impact on you, however, it's just to point out that where it states action here, it says edit assessment info. Well, what it will say is view assessment info. It's just a very small bug that we've got. We're just working with the developers at the moment. So for this one, I want to work on the showcase portfolio and where it will say view assessment information, I'm going to tick on that. Here will be an upload of the evidence um, in relation to that assessment component. I can view this by ticking the option view which will download here. As this is test data, this is for just demonstration purposes only. But here you will see the evidence that's been uploaded against our assessment component. Okay, so I'm happy with this, this showcase portfolio and I'm now going to add a result by clicking the option add result, the following is displayed here. So what we're going to look at now, as I said, is going to give the outcome for the showcase portfolio. We're going to do this by looking at the outcome section and using the drop down. For this instance, we're going to give the showcase portfolio a pass you'll get a little green note that will say this will mark the component as successful. Nothing at this stage is required to upload as this component has passed. However, should this have failed, this is where the failed feedback form will be uploaded. But I will show, that, show you that on the next component. So for this instance, the showcase portfolio, the only information we have changed is the outcome to a pass. And we're going to select the option next. As this is a pass, there's no feedback required. So I'm going to leave this. And again, as this is a pass, there is no further action required. So I'm going to skip this part. And this is the declaration from yourself to, to say that you are happy with the results and you are ready for that to be processed, to be QA'd by your LEAPER. Within EPA Pro, there will be no need for you to enter your name and signature every time. As soon as you log in, there'll be an, um, an option for you to enter your name and, and do your signature as close as possible. As you can see by what I did earlier, it looks nothing like mine. Select Submit. And you will see now that that showcase portfolio, the status has changed to pending QA. And it's gone like a 
different colour. So what we're going to do now, we are going to add the results for the practical observation. We would go to view assessment information. We would select the view option. This would download any evidence that relates to that assessment component. Once we are happy and we've done our assessment, we would like to add the results. For this, we would use the add results tab which would display then the following page. As previous, we are going to select the outcome and we're going to do this as a fail. This will state that this component has now been marked as a fail. At this point, we would need to upload here the failed feedback form. And then the upload name Failed feedback form as well. Nothing's to be included on those pages, is it? No. So, where you've got feedback, these are also to be left blank because your feedback is provided within that failed feedback form that you've just previously uploaded. Now we've come to tab number three, next action. Now, because this apprentice has failed, this assessment component, we are going to put that this apprentice will take a retake of the practical observation. You've got three um, options to choose from. So we will take retake. And the date here is for the earliest date for the retake. This is not the date of when the retake of the practical observation is going to happen. So for this instance, we're just going to put the day after and just a time of nine o'clock. Just to confirm, this is not the actual date of when the practical observation retake will take place. It's the earliest date. Select next. This is defaulted for you. And we select submit. This will then also state that this is now pending QA. Next, we will go to professional discussion. So we're going to view assessment information, select the view option, which will download any assessment evidence against this um, component. Once we've assessed and we're happy we've got our result, we will add results. We are going to select the outcome. I'm going to put this as a pass. As no failed, failed feedback form is, needs to be uploaded on this, we are going to select next and we're going to skip through. No action is required as this component is a pass. Once we're happy, we'll select submit and you will then see that the three statuses now have gone into pending QA. And that is how you edit your results. Any questions? I know that's quite a lot, lot to take in, but the process is, as I say, you would view assessment information, it would download the evidence that's been uploaded, and then you would just add in your results. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, any questions, anything that you want to ask that we can go over again there for you? No? No questions? Okay. The slides that we have in the pack relate directly um, to what Libby's just demonstrated. So um, that will support you. And we're also um, going to put together some FAQs and some additional guidance, aren't we, Libby, um, for the IUPAS um, when they are going live with the system. Um, okay. So shall we move on and just look at the, the, the QA side of things? Because we are approaching this differently with the releasing by component, aren't we? Yes. So for this instance, I'm going to log on, log on as a leaper. So if you just bear with me, don't want to confuse you. I'm just going to quickly pop on here. And as a leaper, I am now going to QA. 
So as a leaper, I can see my workflow and here will be a list that's displayed with all the IEPA's work that's waiting to be QA'd. So we've got the lovely Frank Farmer. I'm just going to click on Frank. And we can see that Justine Wood has now displayed. So we can clearly see that the IEPA has given a result of pass the showcase portfolio, a fail for the practical observation and a pass for the professional discussion. As a leaper, I'm going to view the assessment info. Again, that is exactly mirrored as the IEPA, where you'd be able to see any evidence that's been uploaded for the apprentice for that particular component. We're going to view the result that the IEPA has awarded. And I can clearly see that this is going to be a pass has been awarded by the IEPA. If I am happy as a leaper and I've QA this result, I would select QA result. And I am just going to put that this has been QA'd. I'm happy that this is going to be a pass. Normally this would have been defaulted. And we are now going to, as a leap, publish the result. I'm going to select publish result, which will go green. And to the bottom right hand side, it will ask me to submit QA and publish result. As you can see then, Justine Wood, you can see that the one component has passed, it has now gone green. For the practical observation, exactly the same process, I would download the evidence. I would view the result that the IEPA is given as a fail. If I am happy that this is a fail, I'm going to QA the result. And as a leaper, exactly the same, I will put QA because I am, I am agreeing with the IEPA. The bottom I'll publish result to make sure it's green which will then give you the option to submit QA and publish result. As you can see now, you've got the showcase portfolio as a complete as a pass. This element has now gone green, but we can clearly see that there has been a fail result entered for the practical observation, and this is identified with the fail and that it's gone red. For the professional discussion, exactly the same process. I'm going to view the assessment information that's been uploaded I'm going to view the result. I'm going to QA the result. I'm happy with the IEPA's result. That's why I'm going to put it as QA. Go to the next page. And I'm going to publish the result. And I'm going to do that by submitting QA and publish result. And you will see that that has gone from the Leaper dashboard. So what I will do now is I'm going to just quickly log on back as Frank Farmer to show you how that then looks on the IEPA dashboard. So if you just bear with me. So I'm back on Frank's IEPA dashboard. And I'm going to go now to the assessment and the assessment progress. As previously mentioned, this will detail all your apprentices and where they are with their EPAs. If you do remember earlier that we changed this tab to filter by status, this will be included in the packs that will come out to you. The apprentice name is Justine, so I'm just going to pop Justine in there. And then what you will see that I can clearly see that the my leaper has agreed with me that the showcase portfolio is a pass, the professional discussion was a pass, and they've also agreed that the practical observation was a fail. You can clearly say, see now a new option has come up with book retake. Once discussions have been you've had with the provider and you have a date for the retake of the practical observation you would simply enter this date by booking the retake. By doing this, what you are going to do then is go back to the original, if you remember when we were booking our assessment components, by selecting the date, the time, 
again that it's online. We'll go to the next. We'll skip past these. We've already got Frank highlighted. Then you've got a new tab that's popped up saying the reason. And as you can see here, we've got a reschedule, retake and back into learning. As this is a retake, I'm literally just going to put retake. Go to the next tab. And then there's a declaration. Unfortunately, this is a, a system that we just, a system issue that we just have to work through. And on this, we just tick green, tick green, and your details will be at the bottom. Once you're happy with everything, you select retake. And that has now been planned. So as you can see, this is the planning um, meeting for Justin Wood. Showcase portfolio has gone green, it's got a tick, they've passed. Same with the professional discussion. Your practical observation is a lighter green and you can just see there a little clock, which means this has now been booked for a retake. I know that was quite a lot to go through, but this is all backed up with the presentation slides. Any questions? Any questions on that for Libby while we've got her um, this afternoon? No? Uh, uh, what we covered earlier today in the process presentation, hopefully that's all coming together now uh, with the need to locate your IEPA recording forms and documentation in SharePoint and the information that you're going to need to put into the EPA Pro system. No questions? No, it is a very small group today, though. It's an exclusive attendee group this afternoon, Libby. So um, got I think IPs on. we have indeed. Yes. <laughs> we have. So they don't really have any questions. And we have been through that um, in detail, um, but it, we've got through that quicker than than we do with the larger groups because sometimes there's lots and lots of questions. Um, if we just go back to the slides and I'll just um, give you an overview and reiterate um, what um, has been said there. And then if you do think of anything, just raise your hand. So we've got uh, the rescheduling of the assessment component. So right back at the beginning, after the planning meeting, we've put in those assessment components and we've set the dates and the times and the locations of those in EPA Pro as per the agreement with the customer at the planning meeting. We've rescheduled one of those events um, for whatever reason, we've had to reschedule it. This slide takes you through how to reschedule an assessment date of the component once it's been planned in. Um, we looked at assessing a component and that will take you through accessing the evidence so Libby demonstrated how you can click on to the apprentice not only see how far they've progressed through the EPA but also access the evidence that you're going to need to assess um, assess the evidence and um, add in the results into the component um, these slides take you all the way through that process um, how to, this one's how to upload your fail feedback, as, as Libby demonstrated. Um, then taking a fail component, a failed assessment method, and rebooking that, so for a resit. Um, and then this screen is to show you that all is completed and what those screens will look like when you've added in all of the um, grading outcomes that you need to add into the system. We looked a little bit at quality assurance as well, just so that you can see how that audit trail and the loop is closed um, and the EPA is signed off. Uh, so Libby demonstrated um, how that works in the system. Obviously, as an IEPA, you're just going to see things change in your view. You won't be having a leap of view, but the leaper will still need to quality assure all of your assessment decisions in the same way that they do now. Then we have the overall EPA decision. So uh, again, Libby just taken us 
through how we publish the results by component and then the overall result as well. Um, if there's any questions on this, please do shout and this is your time to, to ask those questions. Okay, so let me just have a look back. Anything else that we can cover for you? Because I think we've been through the majority of the um, the controls there, Libby, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, again, depending on what the VIPs online would like, I mean, I can change that practical observation to a pass if they want me to, just so they can see how to change the result. I don't mind. Yeah, that would be great. I'll give it back to you. That would be good. Okay. So for Justine Wood, just to just go back, uh, there was one of the assessment components that we put through as a fail. We, we've done a rebook. Um, and I'm just going to put the results through now just so you can see how to get to that component. So we'd always start on the landing page because I think it's really important to see how to navigate your way through. So we're going to go to assessment, assessment progress. Justin's there because uh, again, let's just make it so I haven't. So there's your list of all your apprentices. If you remember, we're going to change this filter to filter by status. We'll put Justin in. Where she is. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that the practical observation has been booked, which it has, um, and we've got a result that we want to add now. So you can see here that it's now got one previous result, so it's clearly obvious that this has been a retake. We're going to add the results. Again, all we're going to do is select the outcome. And because I'm in a really good mood, I'm going to give a distinction. No further information is required. No feedback is required. No further action is required. I'm just going to submit. That then will go to pending QA. You just bear with me let me just log on as a leaper i just want to change this so you can see as an ieper how this will change on your dashboard so let me just go to frank okay so i can clearly see that just doing what i have a result that's pending i would normally view the assessment information by downloading view the result i want to qa I'm really happy that this apprentice has now got a distinction. There is a leaper. I'm just going to confirm the result now. I'm going to publish the result so it goes green. Voila. What I'm going to do now is just log back on as an IEPA, just to show you now what that looks like on your dashboard. So we're at the landing page here. We're going to go to assessment. We're going to go to assessment progress. We're going to make sure that filter just up there is by status. I'm going to type in Justin. There she is. So I can clearly see now that the uh, three components have passed. We've got two passes and a distinction, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is certification. You will see on the certification tab, Justin Wood. Again, every screen is such when it's showing you the assessment components, it, it mirrors it to a degree. So by going to the certification tab, I can see that Justin Wood, showcase portfolio pass, practical observation and distinction, and the professional discussion is a pass. I'm happy with this, I will certify the apprentice. And this is where I'm going to grade the overall endpoint assessment and give an overall result. I'm going to give this apprentice a pass. Okay, this will certify the apprentice as a pass. Should the apprentice has had failed, this here is where you would upload the failed feedback form. Nothing is needs to be entered in here. Here will be the employer details and it's just a tick box, tick box to confirm the employer details. 
again with the apprentice details as well. We are confirming. And the declaration will be pre-populated with your name and signature. I'm happy with everything and I will submit. And you will see then in the certification tab that Justine Wood has been certified by yourself on this day and is now awaiting again QA from your LEPA. And it will be your LEPA who pushes through the final result then through to the customer. Any questions? Uh, Libby, I'm just thinking about um, some standards have evolved tests yeah. and some, some standards don't. So I know that they're going to be built as per their standard in EPA Pro. They are, yeah. Do you have an example of um, a standard, an apprentice on here now that would show us what happens with the evolved test and what the IEPA would need to do? Oh, now you've asked me. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think I've got that data in, in here, um, Rebecca, to be honest with you. Okay, that's um, something we can pick up later. It's just that for customer service, there isn't one, but for business admin, there is one. And for the leading adult care worker, there is one. And I'm just looking at the system. I'm sure that they will progress it in a very similar way with very similar screens. Yeah. Um, but we will need to come back to that um, to give them some guidance on how that can be done. So add that into the screenshots. Yeah, um, I can definitely within the slide pad. Yeah. Um, that's a really good point um, that we could add in. And thank you for raising that. And just in addition to that, that we can pick up separately is that some of them will have marks rather than grades um, coming out of those evolved tests won't they so we just need to work through the detail of how that's going to be input into the system yeah um but that's great thank you so much any other questions um from anybody that's listening in on the system i think we've been through that today has been a lot of information at speed um, so you may want to go away and reflect and then ask us some questions. Anything else to, to ask Libby? Anything else um, from you? I think it's just really important that once you get access, um, you start looking at it. You, you, you don't be worried by it, don't be scared by it. You can't break it. Trust me, I've, I've tried on numerous occasions. You can't physically break it, um, but it, it it flows, and that's what you've got to remember. That the tabs to your left hand side are the, the very start where your caseload is when you're accepting or rejecting. Your caseload then actually identifies exactly all your apprentices and where they are, and it just flows down that left hand side of your process. Um, but the materials that have been um, written are, you know, they are step by step with what I'm showing you today. If there are any changes or amendments, we will definitely communicate that out to you as the platform's always evolving constantly. Um, for the better as well, there are things that, you know, um, functionalities that we are having updated and everything. We obviously will share that with you um, as soon as possible. But don't be worried, don't be scared. It's, it's lovely, it flows. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Libby. Thank you for that demonstration. Um, Okay, so I think now uh, we have got through that quicker than expected, but as I said, we are a much smaller group with much fewer questions on this um, session today. Um, so um, we'll end the session, but please do come back to us with any feedback, any questions. We are inviting that um, so that we can make our training clearer, better. Um, this is our this is our first attempt really at, at, at training for, for the system and for these processes. So please do let us know. We'll build all of that in to our future sessions. Um, but if there isn't anything else. Oh, Julie's put her hand up. Let's just ask. Hi, Julie. Sorry, just to catch you before you go. Um, can you just show the showcase, oh, not the showcase, the SharePoint um, bits again, please, where we actually upload Yes, I was hoping I was hoping to cover that today, um, but at the moment we're still waiting for that to be set up. 
Oh, right. So okay. what, what we're planning to do is as we're giving um, an additional session for leapers, um, we will give you some additional training and guidance on the SharePoint and where you're going to share um, that information into. Um, we've got a good idea and we've had lots of discussion around it, but it's just the last parts of the logistic puzzle that we need to work through. OK, thank you very um, much. It's been a uh, really good session. Really that forward with you. To Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, anybody else before we end? No. OK, thank you very much for your time. Um, lots of information um, and we'll try and keep you as update, uh, up to date as we possibly can with all of the changes and all of the um, system information that you're going to need for when we go live. Um, just check if we've got another question. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And um, we will be in contact soon with uh, more information and more supportive details and materials and everything that you're going to need. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.